We're in our third week of our sermon series on the good news. It's too good not to believe it. In fact, it's so good, uh, we should be sharing it with everyone uh, that we meet uh, along our way. And so we started two weeks ago with uh, Pastor Jose Zayas from Portland uh, kicking off uh, this, uh, this series as he's one of the evangelists with the Palau Global uh, Evangelist uh, Network. Uh, but then last week, uh, Pastor Luan uh, shared about how sharing the good news is actually the Father's business, and we are all part of the family business. And so today, uh, I want to continue that series and challenge us to share the good news with, with people around us. Well, have you been told as a kid by your parents that you should not talk to strangers? How many of you were told by your parents not to talk to strangers? That's quite a few, right? Yeah, so I, I thought that maybe that's just a Western thing. But how about in Asia? In Asia, were you told to not talk to strangers by your parents? Or do you tell your kids? <laughs> uh, how about in Africa? How about in Africa? In Africa, do you, do you tell that to kids? Don't talk to strangers? So it's not just, uh, it's not just in the West. It's really a, a world, global thing. But how about today, now, now, now that you are all grown up, your mother is not here. Uh, do you still not talk to strangers? Now, how many of you would feel uncomfortable just walking up to a total stranger and just starting a conversation, especially if they're very different for you? How many of you just really enjoy meeting strange people? <laughs> okay, the early service at 8.30 is our introvert service. And so very few uh, really enjoy that. But if we admit it, really uh, many of us uh, would feel uncomfortable going up to total strangers, especially if they look different, if they sound different, if they have a different language, or uh, how many of you actually do that in the airport? Or the person sitting next to you on the airplane, uh, I would have to say, I do not really enjoy that uh, very much. But the problem is that Jesus is telling us, do talk to strangers. <laughs> because uh, he, before he left earth, instructed all his followers to go and be witnesses of him, uh, not just in their home city, not just in their home province, not just in their home country, but to the ends of the earth. Now, for many of you, you're no longer at home. You're no longer in your hometown. Uh, you have come to the ends of the earth. Here you are. Are you talking to strangers? And uh, Jesus is challenging us even today to talk to people who are very different from us, have a very different life story, and to come alongside of them and to share about the good news of Jesus. And I want to talk today and uh, teach you five steps that will help you to lead others to faith and to fellowship in Jesus. And I want to do that using the story of Philip and the Ethiopian. Now, if you are a Christian and you've read the Bible and the book of Acts a few times, you probably would be very familiar with this story. If you grew up in church, going to Sunday school, you probably would have heard this story. And it may be so familiar to us, uh, but today I hope it, it really will sink in how uh, the story of Philip can really help us uh, find a simple way of coming alongside of people and sharing the good news. Now, if in the first century they had newspapers, I imagine this would have made front page news. A Greek Jew baptized an Ethiopian finance minister. I mean, come on. That was just really extraordinary. That just did not happen. In fact, it probably wasn't even legal if he was a good Jew uh, to baptize somebody who would not qualify entering into uh, the faith of the Jews. But Philip had obeyed the Lord. He, he had become a Christian probably uh, at least after Jesus had risen to, the, to heaven and, uh, and the Holy Spirit had come and, and the revival had broken out in Jerusalem. He was one of the first Greek Jewish leaders in the church. But very likely he had become a Jesus follower uh, before all that happened. And so he was very different from this Ethiopian 
eunuch. There couldn't be more strangers uh, than these two men. Uh, the Ethiopian eunuch was a high government official. Uh, he was the treasurer of the country. Uh, today we would call someone like that the finance minister. And he was serving under the queen of Ethiopia. Now Ethiopia back then was south of Egypt where today is Sudan. Uh, Ethiopia, today we would call that area Nubia. But he was serving in the court of the queen. And men in those days, when they are serving the queen, they would be castrated. Now Jews, okay, Jews, they would snip little boys that in the eighth day to be circumcised to become part of the Jewish culture and tradition. But if you were a man serving uh, in the court of the queen, they did not want to have any risk of any affairs taking place. So they would just cut the whole thing off. And as someone like that, who had come to Jerusalem wanting to learn about God, wanting to worship God, it actually was forbidden to enter the temple grounds. And there was for him no way to come into relationship with God, to become a worshiper of God, to become part of the community of God. And yet, this finance minister had made this long journey to know God. And there couldn't have been two more different men than Philip and this Ethiopian minister to meet one another. But as we learn, God loves orchestrating divine meetings. At first, he had to convince Philip to leave what he was doing to have a conversation with a stranger before Philip could lead this Ethiopian to faith in Jesus. And so as we go through this story, we can find five simple steps that will help you to lead even complete strangers to faith in Jesus and become part of our fellowship. Uh, I made an acrostic, five letters, spelled faith. You can repeat after me. F stands for follow God's lead. A is approach and engage. I is initiate with questions. T stands for tell the good news and H is help them respond. Doesn't sound too complicated, does it? But often we overthink when it comes to, oh, how do I share the good news with somebody? You can follow these five steps. And the first step is following God's lead. Being open to God leading your life and leading your steps. And then being willing to obey when God does lead you. And so here in the story in Acts chapter 8, we see that an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. Now, how many of you have had an angel speak to you? Probably if you had, you probably wouldn't raise your hand because that's kind of, wow, that's unheard of. It doesn't happen very much. But uh, we are entering here the story of Philip kind of in the middle. In fact, before all this, Philip uh, was had been in Jerusalem. His colleague, uh, Stephen, had been... Uh, stoned to death, had been executed. And so Philip and all the other leaders scattered around the countryside. And Philip ended up in Samaria, where he shared the good news of Jesus with Samaritans. And uh, as we learned last week, when Jesus was in Samaria, actually a lot of Samaritans came to faith in him. And now Philip is back there again, and many, many more are coming to faith in Jesus. So we would say Philip had a very successful ministry. He was very busy. Why would he leave that ministry unless an angel really talked to him? Now, some of you might say, okay, if an angel talks to me, I'll obey. <laughs> but that's quite exceptional. But here, this angel of the Lord spoke to Philip and said, get up, go south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. Now, this is a desert road. It doesn't make sense. Why would he leave Samaria, this busy ministry, to a desert road where there's nobody and nothing going on. In fact, Philip still obeyed the Lord. He went 
He got up and he went. And this is step one. We need to, one, be open, wanting, willing for God to lead our life, to lead our steps each and every day, for God to be allowed to speak to us and change what we are doing and be willing then to obey when he does lead us. Now, how often you might have a sense of God is telling you or directing you uh, to do this or do that or talk to this person or uh, maybe that's how you ended up here. But how often it's like, ah, no, that can't be God. That, that doesn't make any sense. In this case, for Philip, it didn't make any sense. And yet he was willing to obey. And that's the first step, to be open to God, to guide you, and then to be willing to obey him when he does lead you, even if it's far outside of your comfort zone. And then that leads to the next step, to approach and to engage. Because uh, when Philip uh, obeyed and went, there was an Ethiopian man, a eunuch, and high official of Candace, a queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of the entire treasury. He had come to worship in Jerusalem and was sitting in his chariot on his way home, reading the prophet Isaiah aloud. The spirit told Philip, go and join that chariot. Now, Philip did not know any of this backstory. He didn't know who this man was, why he was in a chariot, what he went to do, where he is going next, and uh, what he is doing now, uh, what his story is. He didn't know any of this. And yet the spirit is telling Philip, go and join this chariot. That man was from a different race, probably spoke a different language, had different traditions, had a different skin color, a different status, very obviously, uh, had different religions. How could he possibly talk to someone who is that strange, that different from him? And yet the Holy Spirit encouraged him just to come alongside of that stranger. Uh, I've, I used to be really nervous meeting with government officials. I don't know about you, but especially in this country, I used to be terrified of, wanting, of meeting with government officials in way in the early days. And uh, God really has had to change me uh, over the years. Uh, if you know some of uh, the story of HAF and our story here in Hanoi and with uh, Love Hanoi and... Uh, how we have built a very good relationship with government, that even three months ago in August, we had dinner with the Vice Minister of Home Affairs and all the top leaders of the government uh, religious affairs uh, with several diplomats in uh, our congregation together. And I, I'm just like, this is so amazing. God has really helped me and led me to be more comfortable having conversations with uh, officials and to be able to actually share our story and what, how God is leading our church uh, into our future. But how about you? Are you comfortable talking to people from a different status in your, uh, uh, than, than you, from a different walk of life, from a uh, different skin color or culture? Are you comfortable or willing to talk to strangers? Because the Bible teaches us that from the beginning to the end, it's God's heart and it's his grand plan to reconcile all nations to him. Every people, all the tribes, every language group, every person on this world, God loves them and wants them to be in relationship with him, not just now, but for eternity. And that is the whole scheme, the whole reason why Jesus came into this world. And because this is the Father's business, that Jesus came to do and we are also part of, he just loves orchestrating divine meeting between you and total strangers. You know, Philip had no clue who this guy was and his story and where he was at, but God did. And he had directed Philip to cross paths with that person. And then Philip discovers that the Holy Spirit had already been at work in that person's life. It wasn't that when Philip showed up and suddenly Philip is the hero of the story. No, God 
is the hero of this story. He's already at work in the other person's life, and he's just asking you to come alongside. And it's our job then to find out where are they at in their spiritual journey. And that leads us to the third step, to initiate with questions. And so when Philip ran up to the chariot, he heard the Ethiopian reading the prophet Isaiah and said, do you understand what you're reading? How can I? He said, unless somebody guides me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And I'm really impressed how respectful Philip is of this other person who is so different from him. He not just comes up and says, hey, do you know about Jesus? Here are the four spiritual laws. One, two, three, four. Now repent. <laughs> he did not do that. And yet still some organizations are training people to use that. But here the Holy Spirit is leading Philip to start with a question. And then based on this question and based on being so inquisitive, now the other person is willing to find, invite Philip into his life, into his chariot, to sit next to him, to come alongside. And this is what I love about Alpha. And this is what Alpha does best. Alpha helps people to come with their questions. And then when they come to Alpha, we listen to them and we find out what are their questions? Where are they at in their spiritual journey? What do they already know about Jesus or about Christianity or why are they even interested to learn more about Jesus? And then starting with those questions to come alongside, have a conversation, and in the conversation, explain more about the good news of Jesus. This is what God is teaching us through the story of Philip. And here's what the Ethiopian was reading. Now the scripture passage he was reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. Now, if you are here today, and uh, this is your first time to church, or first time reading the Bible, or first time reading this passage, you probably have no clue as well who is the author talking about. That was the problem that the Ethiopian finance minister had. How can I understand this passage? It's so confusing. It sounds very cryptic, this uh, prophetic word. Now, back then, they didn't have Bibles. They didn't have a book with an index uh, that led you to different books and then with chapters and verses and an introduction and you can understand what is the context etc who the author is talking about no they had scrolls and so here on the screen you can see a recently found completely intact scroll of the book of Isaiah now that scroll the, the, it would be about the height of an A4 and if you put that um, 35 A4 pages all next to each other that would make up the whole scroll. And so now here, the eunuch had found himself on page 28. And he's reading this passage and just confused about who is Isaiah talking about? He says to Philip, I ask you, who is this prophet saying this about? Himself? Or someone else, because if you read through the book of Isaiah, at the start it talks about the prophet Isaiah and all his experiences. And then Isaiah is prophesying and he's talking about Israel and Israel, the servant of God. But then as he continues writing and he comes into chapters 49 and 50, 51, 52, 53, he starts changing it to the suffering servant. And by that point, the eunuch is like, I don't know. Now I don't know who he's talking about. But Philip is using this question as an opportunity to share the good news about Jesus. He says, Philip proceeded to tell him the good news about Jesus, beginning with that very scripture. Now Jesus had taught 
his disciples, his uh, uh, cohort of students, so to speak, uh, who had become the first church leaders, uh, he had taught them from the Jewish scriptures how all the prophecies of the promised Messiah, of the promised deliverer, of the co promised prophet and king, how these were being fulfilled and how Jesus fulfilled these, how he is now the Messiah, the king of Israel. And Jesus taught this throughout his whole ministry. He taught this right before he died. He said, all these things need to happen. And then when Jesus rose from the dead, he said, didn't I tell you? I taught you all these things. This is all that should be happening. And he, for 40 days, was teaching them from Scripture, from the Jewish Scriptures. And so that the apostles, when they taught the next set of leaders, they were trained in how to explain the good news of Jesus from these Scriptures. And now Philip finds himself faced with a question. And starting with that question, being able to explain the good news about Jesus. How about you? If somebody, you meet someone and they say, I, uh, I have read a part of the Bible. I started at the beginning. I got to the middle. I have no clue what it's talking about. Could you start with that point and explain the good news about Jesus? How comfortable, how confident do you feel you could explain the good news of Jesus when somebody has a question about the Bible, Christianity, who is Jesus, where, uh, why uh, is God good, but there's war around the world? All these questions, how confident are you? You know, if Jesus gave us one mission to make him known to the ends of the earth, it would be worthwhile that we actually gain experience and understanding on how to explain it when people ask us questions. But I think many of us are still uncomfortable talking to strangers about the good news of Jesus. And perhaps part of the confusion or our discomfort is our understanding of the word evangelism. Because uh, the word that's used in this passage about telling the good news is the Greek word evangelizo. And evangelizo is actually a verb form of good news. So in English, we would actually say good newsing. Good newsing. I wish the translators would use that word. It would be so simple. Ah, oh, I can good news. Can you good news? Let's go good newsing. <laughs> but most of the time it's translated as preaching the gospel in English. And to most of us, when you hear preaching, well, I didn't go to seminary. I can't do that. Check out. Or gospel, well, I don't understand the gospel. What is the gospel? Well, gospel is just old English words. It just means good news, good newsing. And so we have a very stereotypical view of what it means to good news, to evangelize, to share the good news because of that English translation. But there's various ways in which you can good news with other people. And uh, that's why I gave you these uh, booklets uh, this morning. Uh, these are seven ways in which you can share the good news with other people. Perhaps you are more of an intellectual and you would love to explain uh, all the details and you would love to defend the Christian faith uh, to other people. And that's one way. But others, they love to proclaim, to declare, to preach. And actually recently we just started a preaching cohort and we have a whole group of others who are learning how to preach. But then perhaps maybe you are a storyteller. You know, stories are just great. And all of us have a story to tell. We each have a testimony. And uh, when we were listening to the testimonies of those who were baptized, it's just amazing. Your story is amazing. Do you know how to tell your story? Or others love making Jesus known through good works. And yesterday we worked with uh, Keep Vietnam Clean. We were in the Fuxa ward cleaning up the farm field that was just filled with trash. How many of you here were there yesterday? Uh, yeah, thank you guys for joining yesterday and making Jesus known because they know we are Christians, we're a church, and we love that community. And now they're inviting us back 
to, in it, to do some other projects in that community. Or perhaps you love being innovative. I, I love technology, I love design, I love creating new things. And uh, so maybe you, you know, did you know that they're using AI and creating bots to do the evangelism for you? <laughs> but maybe you're cutting edge and you'd like to be on the forefront. Many people are into this, but I would guess that for most of us, friendship is the easiest way. Having coffee with somebody, uh, just uh, listening to their story, and as you build a relationship to share about your life and your experience. But then for some, it's all about caring. You know, just sit down with the other person listen to their story, ask que coaching questions, draw out from them, and just as you care for them, they experience the love of Jesus through you. And perhaps one of these ways resonates most with you. And that's why this booklet is so helpful. You can uh, scan the QR code on the third page, do a, a short quiz, answer a few questions, and you find out the top three ways you are most comfortable with uh, your preferred way of sharing the good news and maybe you are already doing it you just didn't realize you were evangelizing but sharing the good news doesn't complete the process quite yet we need to help them to respond as they were traveling down the road they came to some water and the eunuch said look there's water what could keep me from being baptized? And so as Philip had shared this good news about Jesus, he included that once you believe, you can become part of the community of Jesus by being baptized, which means you say no to your past life. You get washed from all the past wrong deeds that you have done. And as you go under the water, that life is over. And when you rise up again, just like Jesus rose to a new life, you also have a new life again. And then you become part of the fellowship of Jesus. It's not just about personal faith. It's about a fellowship of a community. And so the eunuch said, oh, what keeps me from being baptized? And so he ordered the chariot to stop. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord carried Philip away. And the eunuch did not see him any longer, but went on his way rejoicing. Uh, two weeks ago, we had, uh, after Pastor Jose had uh, talked about the good news, uh, uh, a mother with her son came forward to receive prayer after the service. And uh, the son actually was quite good in English. And he said he recently had come to believe in Jesus. And he said he had prayed by himself to receive Jesus, but he would like to pray together so that he would receive Jesus in his life. I'm like, wow, that's exciting. And he said, but my mother now also wants to follow Jesus. But she doesn't speak English, so <laughs> praise God for the little bit of Vietnamese that I know. I could explain a little bit about uh, the good news of Jesus in simple Vietnamese language. You know, it's not complicated. Keep it simple. And explain the good news about Jesus and what it means to follow Jesus, to leave your old life away uh, behind, that all these old deeds are forgiven and you start a new life that lasts forever. And would you want that? And she said, yes. And we prayed together. Amen. I mean, that's so exciting. But it's not the end. It's just the beginning. And baptism, I find baptism such an exciting time of the year. At the end of October, we had nine people from all kinds of nationalities being baptized. And here on the picture is uh, Stephen from uh, Kenya. And uh, Stephen from Kenya, he and his wife had ended up here in Hanoi. had come to faith along their journey at some point, but never come to a point of uh, being baptized. And so he found uh, uh, Collins and Vivian uh, from HIF, who are Kenyans, on Facebook. And so... Vivian and Collins, uh, like Philip, came alongside and found out where are they at in their faith journey and find out that, well, they have become Christian, but not yet baptized. And so introduced them to the foundation class where they learn more about Jesus and baptism. And then finally, on the baptism day, Stephen was baptized 
And then the very first thing he did after that was baptizing his own wife. I mean, how, how great is that? That's such an exciting thing to be part of, to see the commission of Jesus being fulfilled right here in our midst. And that is the Father's business. The good news about Jesus is just too good not to to believe is too good not to share with other people especially people who are very different from us with strangers this is the father's business that's why jesus came to do this work of his father's business and that's what we have been invited into we are part of the family business as pastor luan said last week and Jesus had sent his followers to go everywhere and to talk to everyone. And so here, now you're in Hanoi, Vietnam at such a time as this. Are you willing to talk to strangers? Are you open to be directed by the Holy Spirit? And are you able to explain the good news of Jesus starting where people are at? And this is why I find this story of Philip and the Ethiopian so helpful to kind of break down this process of uh, sharing the good news in five simple steps. So repeat after me again. F stands for follow God's lead. A stands for approach and engage. Init and then I is initiate with questions. And T is tell the good news and H is help them respond. Jesus has commissioned us to do talk to strangers. You've grown up, you're out of your home, you're not in your home country anymore unless you're Vietnamese, but you're allowed to call, talk to strangers. <laughs> Are you willing? Do you dare? Are you able to share the good news of Jesus with people who are very different from you? God loves to orchestrate divine meetings between you and others who do not know anything yet about Jesus. Do you remember three weeks ago, Dr. Brian Stiller was here sharing how he was staying at a hotel downtown and was being served by the same servant for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then at breakfast, he asked, uh, she asked him who he was and what he was doing. He said, he's a Christian. He's going to church. And have you ever met a Christian? And she said, no, I've never met a Christian. You are here at such a time as this, <coughs> meeting people who know nothing about Jesus. God is orchestrating all these divine appointments. Are you willing? Are you able to share the good news about Jesus? Because that is HIF's mission here, to make Jesus known among all the nations that are represented here in, in Hanoi, in Vietnam, and beyond. And so our vision is that it's not just up to the staff or the leaders, but to everyone to help at least someone to love God and to love others. And so the question we ask then, who is your someone? Who is your Ethiopian eunuch, so to speak? Who is that teacher or that student or that co-worker or the shop owner or the taxi driver in your life that God has orchestrated for you to meet and to come alongside, find out where they are at in their spiritual journey and start with their questions to explain about Jesus, leading them to faith and to baptism. That's why this morning you also have received this bookmark. Because God already has orchestrated for you to meet strangers in your life. Who are these people? Write down their name. Would you pray for them as you do your devotions each day? Be aware and attentive for opportunities, how the Holy Spirit might be leading and guiding you. Perhaps the most daring prayer you could pray this morning is to say, God, 
I am open and willing to follow your leading to talk to someone about Jesus. God will definitely answer that prayer. Just be ready. And what a great opportunity we have in just a few weeks on December 14 uh, with uh, the Christmas festival uh, that is being planned at Yenser Park uh, just down the street uh, that way. The largest public park in the city where last year we had 14,000 people come uh, throughout the day. This year we're hoping to have even more coming with uh, all kinds of activities and booths and vendors and uh, uh, family games uh, throughout the day and in the evening uh, performances. Uh, and then uh, uh, evangelist Reed Saunders will be sharing the Christmas uh, story of Jesus uh, coming into this world to love and to save them. Last year, we had over a thousand respond to that good news message. And so would you invite your friend, your someone to come to this festival this year? What a unique opportunity we have to invite our friends. And if you are interested, uh, like last year and the year before, we are performing as the HIF African Choir. But uh, if you're not African, you're still welcome to join the team. And so they will start practicing next week after service, after the third service, which is 12.40. So you could uh, decide to join the 11.30 service and then join that or come back at 12.40 to join the choir uh, for their performance and uh, be part of that big event. Well, let us pray together. Father, we just thank you for this uh, beautiful story, perhaps very familiar to, to many of us. And yet uh, brought new and fresh to us this morning by showing us a simple five-step process of how to share the good news about Jesus with total strangers. Thank you, Lord, for that example. Thank you, Lord, that evangelism is not just preaching to the crowds like Philip was doing in Samaria. But it's also about coming alongside of strangers and sitting next to them and asking questions, finding where they're at and to explain more about Jesus. Lord, we just thank you that you are in the business of orchestrating these divine appointments. And I pray that for each one of us, even this week, even today, you would orchestrate a meeting with somebody and we might know them already or it might be a new person that you have brought into our life to come to know you through us. We pray this in Jesus' name.